Thank you for joining us at The Real News Network. We are live on Facebook. In just a moment, we'll be joined by Ben Norton, a reporter for Alternate's Gray Zone Project, to discuss one of the most dramatic moments yet for Trump's America, a raging controversy over contact with Russian officials claiming the scalp of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn late on Monday. His resignation letter saying, quote, I inadvertently briefed the vice president-elect and others with incomplete information regarding my phone calls with the Russian ambassador. It all comes down to claims that Flynn held discussions with Moscow the week before Trump took office about the possibility of the U.S. lifting sanctions against Russia, as first exposed by the Washington Post. U.S. officials say that could both be illegal and leave Washington vulnerable to blackmail. Mike Pence, the vice president, was dragged into this mess when Flynn assured him the claims were untrue, leading the vice president to step in and defend him live on TV. But then Flynn came out saying sanctions may have come up with talks with Russia. He just couldn't remember 100 percent. According to Washington, intercepted comms with Russia show Flynn didn't make any promises about lifting Russian sanctions, though he did suggest any trade restrictions brought in under Pre President Obama wouldn't necessarily carry out over into the new administration. Retired General Keith Kellogg has been named acting national security advisor while Trump decides who will fill the position. Well, we're now joined by Ben Norton. Thank you so much for joining us, Ben. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Ben, um, you know, Donald Trump has tweeted that the real story here is that there have been so many illegal leaks coming out of Washington. Will these leaks be happening as I deal with North Korea? Um, others might say one of the, <laughs> the real story might be um, how this is exposing rifts within the Trump administration. Uh, Trump has uh, backed uh, closer ties with Russia. And then we also have the neocon wing, uh, Mike Pence, as an example, that have been um, virulently anti-Russia, um, you know, drawing back into the Cold War, really. Can you give us your response? Absolutely. I mean, I think what it, you're, you hit the nail on the head there. What this demonstrates is there is this internal contradiction within the Trump administration already on foreign policy. You know, it's been there for a while. Flynn was himself one of the people who was pushing uh, for rapprochement with Russia. Um, you know, there are you know, many alleged ties. He spoke at, uh, he perhaps spoke, but at least attended a dinner and sat next to Putin um, that was organized by Russia Today, the Russian state media. Um, and, you know, uh, in some ways, I don't, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a negative thing. I, we should all, anyone who's concerned with peace, be looking for rapprochement, um, be concerned about potential escalation uh, and even military conflict uh, against Russia. I mean, Russia has the most nuclear weapons in the world. It has a very large army. Um, so it, I'm not necessarily saying this is a negative thing. However, um, at the same time, we should recognize that although there's an eternal rift on Russia, there is not an eternal rift on Iran. And when it comes to the Middle East, and especially when it comes to the issue of, of Islam, Flynn is incredibly extreme. Um, you know, he's a he's a virulently anti-Muslim bigot, frankly. Um, he's he's claimed openly that Islam, the religion of 1.7 billion people, is actually not a religion. It's a political ideology. He likened it to a cancer. Uh, Flynn has this this pathological hatred of Iran. Um, and, and again, I mean, so do many of the neocons. So while it's true that when it comes to Russia, they may have some distinctions. And, and in many ways, you know, that's clearly what it was at the heart of what's happening here. Um, you know, I, I don't think we should necessarily consider this a huge loss, um, especially for those of us who are interested in peace. Um, because again, I mean, Flynn, when it comes to issues like Russia, he might not have been as bad as some neoconservatives. He could have even been worse in other ways. Um, Flynn is also notorious for, I mean, not only having this pathological hatred, but letting this hatred guide his own reason. Um, you know, he has a penchant for extreme conspiracy theories, uh, he's claimed without any evidence, absurdly, that there are Arabic signs on the U.S.-Mexico border that guide jihadists from Mexico into the U.S. and tell them where to go. I mean, he's also claimed in one of the most outlandish conspiracies of all that Iran, which he sees, you know, in, in a book that he wrote, uh, he sees Iran as, as the, the heart of evil in the world. And, and, and conspiratorially, he claims that it's actually in cahoots with ISIS even though ISIS is an extreme Sunni group, it's you know a genocidal extremist Sunni fundamentalist group, and Iran is a Shia majority country, one of the few Shia majority countries. He, he claims they're secretly in cahoots with each other that Iran is supporting ISIS, etc. So, it, so that's that sort of I mean, sort of a, demonstrating his lack of basic understanding over the religion of Islam. It seems like the hatred has sort of clouded his judgment or his his logic, as you were saying. Yeah, I mean. 
you could, one could put it that way. One could also put it in a way that uh, he doesn't really even care about you know logic or reason. He his worldview, kind of like Steve Bannon, sees the West as in fundamental contradiction with the so-called East. You know, Steve Bannon in a 2004. Steve Bannon is Trump's chief strategist, and in many ways, he on foreign policy is like people like Mike Flynn. And again, just because they oppose the neoconservatives, which is true, doesn't necessarily mean they're progressive, right? And he, that is Bannon, in 2014, uh, gave a speech at a Christian conference in which he insisted the so-called Christian enlightened West is at war. He said a very bloody conflict with Islam, secularism, atheism, etc. cetera. Um, and Flynn is, is similar in some ways. Um, I mean, certainly it clouds his reason, but it actually informs his entire worldview where he really does think that, you know, we're at war with Islam and he sees Iran as the embodiment of that. And he thought that Russia could be a potential ally in that war. So, I mean, it's good and we should support rapprochement with Russia. We should absolutely oppose uh, any kind of escalation of conflict. And, and that's one of the few positive things we've seen. Very few. I mean, there are so many horrible things about the Trump administration. But it's good to see that, that it doesn't look like war with Russia, at least right now, is on the table, because that would be catastrophic. However, we should recognize that just because someone wants rapprochement with Russia and doesn't want to declare war against it doesn't mean they're progressive and doesn't mean that they're necessarily, you know, uh, an ally politically. And I wanted to get your response to some developments on Capitol Hill. Um, Democrats have called for an investigation. The Republican chairman of the Oversight Committee says there will be none in the House. Meanwhile, The Hill is reporting Senator Roy Blunt on Tuesday said there should be an exhaustive, who's a Republican, said there should be an exhaustive investigation, the ties between Russia and the Trump administration. He says, I quote, I think everybody needs, to invest, needs that investigation to happen, he told KTRS Radio. That was reported by CNN. Um, what's your What's your reaction to some of the political fallout we're seeing um, over uh, over this this growing controversy? Well, of course, I think it's incredibly hypocritical. Like many things in Capitol Hill, um, you know, there's this this deep seated, almost McCarthyite hatred of Russia. And the irony is, I mean, Russia is nothing at all like it was 25 years ago. It hasn't been socialist for decades. Its government is right wing, frankly. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't kowtow to the U.S. It doesn't tow the party line when it comes to U.S. foreign policy, you know, in Syria and in other conflicts in Ukraine. You know, it has different positions and it's seen as this evil boogeyman and, and no one will tolerate any interaction with it. I mean, uh, it's true that Flynn violated protocol. Um, you know, perhaps resignation was the most appropriate response. But at the same time, if we look at what he was doing, he was discussing the lifting of sanctions. Um, you know, perhaps he discussed other things as well, but that's the crux of the issue we're talking about here. And yeah, that is a violation of policy. But, you know, the lifting of sanctions is something that we should encourage. I mean, if we were, if we're interested in peace, if we're interested in rapprochement, you know, that's a, if you want to pursue diplomacy instead of just, you know, uh, harming other countries economically and politically, that's not a big deal, right? Um, and then when you also underlie, uh, when you look at the underlying uh, hypocrisy when it comes to other countries as well, it, it's almost baffling. So yes, Flynn may have had these ties to Russia, uh, but what about the ties that other politicians have to countries like Saudi Arabia? C certainly the Russian government is repressive in some ways, but nothing compared to countries like Saudi Arabia or Qatar or even Turkey. You know, and, and many politicians in the U.S. have extreme ties, you know, very close ties to these countries. Uh, in fact, the Trump administration has already been I'm moving even closer to Saudi Arabia. They've had uh, multiple phone calls with Saudi King Salman and, and the deputy crown prince. Um, you know, where where is the controversy on Capitol Hill? Where are the investigations into links to this extremist regime that supports extremism throughout the world, that subjugates women, et cetera? I mean, clearly, you know, there's this kind of Cold War uh, boogeyman that Russia has been presented as. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Perhaps people should investigate Flynn. That's fine. But are we going to investigate other forms of, uh, you know, links to other countries that have repressive regimes as well? This wraps up part one of our discussion with Ben Norton. To watch the full discussion, go to therealnews.com.